Here is Darce's build. Two tribal slingers. He's got the armor, Numidian Rider General. That's our, uh, that's the shock cav. Uh, two of the armor, Numidian skirm cav. One desert cohort. Looks like seven desert legionaries. Four light infantry. And two desert vigiles. Let's see. Moore's build more commanding our Verity. A win here for Moore, and I think that he uh, secures his playoff appearance. Just what he's wanted. Chosen swords, three, four, and five. Uh, four Celt slingers. It's like two more chosen sword in the back. Noble horse general. Four heavy horse and two Celt warriors. I like this build. Uh, thanks for the emperor to do. But here's your look at this. Look at that melee. Strong central melee slingers way on the uh, sides. Not many units protecting them. So if those units uh, actually tie back together or what they want to do. A native playthrough on Total War Empire? I never played Total War Empire. What, what time period is that? Wait, Hammy, Hammy said he had something at 8.30. He's got seven minutes to beat, or to play. He might not beat Sean, but to play Sean. Sean, uh, I can't wait to watch that battle. But this is the, our first battle, Dar says, Masesli again, and more as our Verity. Again, I I have early concerns. Uh, I don't know if I like these slingers spreading out, especially with the, such little protection. You got a vigile. I guess the melee is pretty close. But uh, Dars, of course, undefeated. The Emperor not undefeated. I, I should be taking notes to Dars. Uh, joke, welcome. Welcome in. Uh, why do they have the gaps between front line units? Good question. Um, so sometimes, you know, people put, uh, it's like you'll see front lines as like a lesser unit. It's like a Celt warrior, um, or like a Levy Freeman. And or, like you're talking about, uh, when the formations were made, right? I guess we could see Darcy's formation. It's like the gaps here. It's just, it's basically in general, it's good to have your units spread out wide. It gives you better flanking potential. Um, that's probably the that's probably the main thing right there, uh, and, and as I was saying, like people like to put lesser units on the front. I, I get it, uh, but I also I also don't understand it even after like two thousand hours. Um, I think the th uh, thinking there is that uh, so your your elite units don't get hurt by like a calf charge, but in this case there's no calf or more to worry about or our Verney to worry about. We'll see, uh, we'll see how that pays off. That's a good question, though, about, uh, the gaps in between the units. Yeah, definitely, you know, like a one long line, like that, not, uh, I guess the line would be a little bit longer. But you don't see it often, although there's been some battles where we've seen, you know, good players just do a long line. In that case, they were, they were using, like, a rush build just to overwhelm their enemy. That probably wasn't the best answer. I don't even think I answered it. But I tried. Forward! Obobov, welcome in. Riders advance! Can we have a Total War Rome 2 score and talk how to be a better Quickly fighter? From me, Lazar, you beat me. What was that, Wednesday? Riders advance! Your builds were looking nice. They're looking very nice. But, uh, jokes, I will say, uh, a good, you know, a good, if you're a beginner in uh, the PvP, definitely start spreading your unit uh, as far wide as possible, especially the melee. Because I do, you know, something I see from beginners is that they kind of like put them like a block, like a, a block formation. It's just not, it's just not the best. Because let's say, let's say this Kelt Warrior is in like a block and you have your Legionary going in. Your legionaries all the way spread out. They're gonna envelop them, crush them. But this is what I was talking about right here. Look at this. More. Looks like he's going for a little bit of an isolation on that slinger unit. That's that's what I was speaking of. It, it's the risk. 
the risk that Dars is taking here is Slinger. Gonna be tough to protect as we see Heavy Horse and Heavy Horse coming in. Almost uh, sacrificing his tribal Slingers. The Slingers will be killed. Armin Numidian General trying to give some sort of resistance. But did more leave too much space as the pressure is on from the Armin Numidian calf? Good for Dark Darcy's got to definitely get away with that unit. That slinger's gone. Looks like more just focusing on this one right flank. Losing 12 of that armored Numidian rider, so a huge unit. Going down earlier in the general. 20 down. Got to keep moving. A lot of micro here. More keeping up the pressure. Does not want that skirm calf to go down. Where's the other skirm calf? They had two. I only see one. Don't tell me it's dead. Over here? I might be blind. I think it's dead. I don't know when that happened. But look at this general being pursued relentlessly by the heavy horse. 58 heavy horse and 50. They're just going to keep going. It'll be tough them, uh, to get them. To stop them. Not sure what... Oh, there it is. Okay. There's the other armored admitting calf. Definitely important here for Darce to not... Uh, you know, your general might die. And as we've seen before, Miss Aisley very reliant on that general's morale. That general's going to die. Hopefully there's not a master out for Miss Aisley, but I've seen crazier things. Certainly seen crazier things. As those slingers, they did get hit, but... uh. They're in the game and they're starting to fire. So those Numidian Riders trying to get some distance, escape those heavy horse, but it's not looking good. The General is routing, the Slinger is routing, and now the Armored Numidian Cav is caught. We'll see here as the rest of the melee gets involved. Armored Numidian Rider, idle, getting hit by a pillum, seven dead. Seven slaughtered. This now looks like, look at this, all heavy horse on the few cav units of Masaisley. If Masaisley has no cav to protect, it'd be an easy mop up for Arverni. Of course, Arverni needs to be a little bit, you know, quick and swift with that. Let's say you, uh, you're a little bit outnumbered here, but oh boy. Unbeknownst to Dars. His armored Numidian cavalry. Ouch. He's going to be defeated. It is gone. So there's two huge units eliminated from the field of battle. So you see the, uh, the balance of power reflecting that. Dars gave it a go. It's shocking to think that Dars beat Asair. I love you, Dars. I love you. But what a win from Dars in that uh, match against Sarah. This time more, looks like he's a little bit too much. All slingers protected. Three cavalry now. We're going to have some big hits. Big hits. That light infantry not going to hold on much longer. More now with the pressure in the rear. And again, look at this, the Noble Horse, 60 men all standing. As a crushing blow. From the Heavy Horse, one side on the Vigilance, one side on the Slingers. As that was beauteous. The Vigilance routing from a singular Heavy Horse charge, something to note there. Those Vigilance going down just from one charge, given they had their general killed. That might have something to do with it. The more eliminating the Cav, getting rid of the Skirm Cav, getting rid of the Slingers, and now his Cav freed up to just whittle away his enemy. Bean. But it looks like Dars, he's going to do the honorable thing and not uh, forfeit early. 
We're gonna get a few more gigantic calf charges. Seriously, I'm trying to think of factions most affected by uh, generals dying. And Seriously, definitely within my top three. I do not like it when their general dies. In. Oh, bone crushing charge. So bone crushing that it caused the game to lag just a little bit. So now it looks like the. Uh, I can't remember what general ability our Baron gets. The Versing Gedrix. And now attack is up. And it's just to seal the deal. As the uh, Desert Romans. Going to be defeated. More clinical. More strategic. More wants a taste of the championship. There's still only two champions in Total War League history, Hammy and Asair. But uh, more looking to join that rank as he continues his league play domination, getting the victory over Lord Dars up and down the board right away. That calf pressure on the general, that was big. That was big, sealing the deal, getting the victory and moving on to his next match.